Welcome to the Alchemist Show. Welcome to the Alchemist Show. This is a student-produced radio show by the Digital Media Class on Perryville Area Career Technology Center. On mic is me, Lucas, and Hannah, and Nathan. And today we have for you a topic on tardigrades, also commonly known as water bears. They can withstand temperatures that ranges from one Kelvin, which is the closest to absolute zero, or if you still don't know what that means, it's approximately negative 458 degrees Fahrenheit to about as high as temperatures as 420 Kelvin or 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And they are the only known creatures on Earth that can survive the vacuum of space. They can also survive pressures about six times greater than those found at the deepest ocean trenches. They can survive ionizing radiation, radiation at dos doses hundreds of times higher than the lethal dose for a human. And they can go about fewer water for more than 30 years drying out to the point to where they are 3% or less of water, only to rehydrate, forage, and reproduce. So, uh, Nathan, could you tell me about um, them living? I've heard that they can only survive for a few minutes in space. That is true. Also, like, if a human were to just go out in space with no helmet, they can only survive for, like, a few seconds, and then they would die. But unlike people, tardigrades are kind of moorish... Uh, revivable, expendable. Does that have something to play into about how they turn to glass at times? Yeah. Uh, whenever they were, whenever they dehydrate, they basically just turn into this glass form from the specific uh, proteins that they have in the body that were just called TBPs or whatever you want to call it, tardigrade specific intrinsically disor disordered proteins. It's yeah, I think I'll stick with the abbreviation. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, could you by chance describe what they look like a bit? It's hard to picture what they look like. Well, basically, kind of like their name, they look like a bear or a pig. They have these really weird shaped mouths that kind of look like the top of an orange, if you know what I mean. Or, like, they have a really circular mouth with pointy teeth at the ends. They are about... Uh, 0.5 millimeters uh, long whenever they are fully grown. They're short and chubby with four pairs of legs. And the first three pairs of legs they use for moving around while they use their legs to eat. So it's like taking an orange and then shoving it into your mouth. With your feet. With your feet. <laughs> they have feet for hands and hands for feet. <laughs> That's, that does paint a very interesting picture, actually. I know. So uh, could you buy, possibly tell me what this... Uh, 151 degrees Celsius or 304 degree heat would be like, for instance, of their survival? 154 degree heat survival? What? Uh, yeah, you said earlier that they can only survive, that uh, their range for survival is at about 154 oh. degrees Celsius. What type of instances would those be? Yeah, so. Uh, like a volcano or something like that? No, a volcano's much hotter. That would be like thousands of degrees. Oh. But uh, it's well over boiling, I could at least tell you that. And then uh, they have their uh, below uh, 458, 1 Kelvin, which is the space, space coldness or whatever, what have you. So I also heard a very interesting uh that you said something earlier. You said that they're pr in normal Earth environments, they're practically immortal. Yeah, that's. I don't necessarily know why, but they don't really age, for se. And also, the reason why they don't just die due to like UV radiations or whatever is because they have X ray proteins that keep them survive. And that's about it. Well, I think that's all we have for this topic. This is The Alchemist Show. We'll be right back after this important message. Go be a great dad in 15 seconds. Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Whew. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. 
It only takes a minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. And you can do it at doihaveprediabetes.org. But you're probably not going to. Nope. I'm sure you've got a perfectly good excuse. Kids, work. <laughs> I get it. You're busy. So what better time than now? Let's begin. Raise one finger if you're a man. Ladies, none yet. Oh, count in your head if you're driving. Now, three more fingers for everyone over 60, two over 50, one over 40, one more if you're not physically active, another finger if anyone in your family has type 2 diabetes, another if you've got high blood pressure, if you're overweight, raise another finger, two if you're very overweight, and three if you're really overweight. You've just taken the world's first audio pre-diabetes test. And if you're holding up five or more fingers, visit doihaveprediabetes.org or talk to your doctor. There's no excuse because prediabetes can be reversed. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. Hi, The Alchemist Show is back with another discussion topic. This time is on pentatonics. And on mic today is me, yours truly, Seth. And me, Riley Bradley. Pentatonics has been a three Grammy award winning a cappella group since 2011 when they first started as a trio before they met their cello playing beatboxer and bass. They have been through at least five albums and going on their sixth album called PTX Volume 4 Classics. This album contains seven songs from different eras. So, what do you think about this? I think it's pretty good. I mean, they already won like three Grammys. That's like, and uh, in 2011, some bands take like forever to try to win a Grammy, and they won like three in like. Within such a short amount of time, yeah, it's exactly. It's just amazing what they have created. I mean, even within the community, it's yeah. like it's not just music that they make their own music too, and they'll base it off stuff and all that. Like um, when the first Turbo movie came out, they based uh, they made a song on that called "We Are Ninjas," right? Yes, I remember that. Um, I also know that whenever the newest or the most recent. Ghostbusters movie, you know, with Melissa McCarthy. I think it's Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, uh, they did the cover of Ghostbusters, and that sounded pretty cool. I mean, yeah. just just for using their voices, it's ridiculous how they do it. Um, I will say that it wouldn't surprise me if they won another Grammy for uh, this yeah. year, just because of their uh, song that just came out, Imagine. Um, on April 7th is whenever their uh, album comes out, which is only in 10 days. Yes. And what's, uh, what songs do we know are on there again? Uh, it would be Imagine yes. by John Lennon, and then Jolene featuring Dolly Parton herself. Oh, really? Yep. And it was re I bet it was a really cool experience singing with her. Um, I will say that the songs that, they, because they had tweeted about this, uh, the track listing, starting with Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a good song. Obviously, Imagine, as I said. Then it goes to Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy, Over the Rainbow, um, Take On Me. You yeah, know that I, I, one. We, that one's really nice. And Over the Rainbow. Who doesn't know that song? Oh, yeah. And then the, uh, the last one before Jolene is uh, Can't Help Fall in Love, I think. I'm, I'm almost positive. But um, I will say it's really incredible how they started off as teenagers, and they're oh, only yeah. twenty, like in their twenties, mm -hmm. and they're just they've accomplished got, so much already. Oh yeah, um, they really grew a family within the community. But there's just so much that they have left, is all I can say. Yes, indeed. All right. Um, I think that's all we have on this topic today. The Alchemist Show will be right back after this important message. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. 
If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. You know what really gets a party started? Indoor baseball. Yeah, just find a broom or a pool cue, and you can use, like, anything as a ball. Cans, bottles, shoes. Hey, bro, toss me that avocado. Most party fouls are pretty dumb, but if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Learn more at ultimatepartyfoul.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hello, this is... Welcome back to The Alchemist Show with another discussion topic. On the mic, this is Anissa Robinson. And Anthony Kirby. Today we're going to be discussing about the upcoming movie, Baby Boss. You wanted to tell about the plot or something? Sure. A new baby arrives. Impact a family told by a wildly imaginated seven-year-old boy named Tim. The boss baby makes his way out of a taxi wearing a suit carrying a briefcase. An instantly sibling rivalry must soon be put aside when Tim discovers that the boss baby is actually a spy on a secret mission and only he can f- help thwart a dastardly plan that involves an Im- impact battle between puppies and babies. Hmm. That sounds pretty interesting. Mm. Mm. So, like, it's a animated com- comedy made by DreamWorks, and um, I believe this movie hits theaters um, Thursday night on March 30th, but it'll be everywhere Friday, March 31st, I believe. This movie is great for younger viewers even and even adults. This movie is going to be a great family movie all around. All around. Yeah, I believe so. Especially for the little kids, because heck, who wouldn't want to see a movie of the funny baby? Mm-hmm. Quite funny. Have you seen any of the trailers for it yet? Oh, well, yes. Especially the funny part where he had this guy himself a puppy. He was about to get caught, so we had to do the one thing a puppy always does to get him out of trouble. What's that? Licking up someone's face. <laughs> Unfortunately, afterwards, he didn't like it. Yeah. Well, anything you want to put for this? What, what question? What will be the next DreamWorks movie? Mm, hopefully they do something with um, Shrek or anything. Yes, because they made a lot of movies about that one. Yeah. Or they could do an artist story about Donkey. Cause yeah. Because they, they, they already did one about Puss. The boots. <laughs> yeah, that was that one was pretty funny. Mm. I thought. Yes. Uh, let's just hope when the next movie comes out, it should be good. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's probably all we have time for for this topic. The Alchemist Show will be right back with, after these important messages. Today we decided to walk to school. At the corner, we waited to cross the street. The stoplight counted down. 15, 14, 31, I mean 13. We took a left on Carroll Garden Street. Garden Street? Loud music was coming from a car. Danny's a smart kid, but he gets so distracted. There were so many other sounds, I didn't know what to focus on. Danny, Earth to Danny. Suddenly he realized he forgot his homework again. I left my homework on the table. At the school steps, we hug goodbye. goodbye. I I really really hope hope he doesn't have another another bad day at school school today. today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free online resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Get personalized recommendations, practical tips, daily access to experts, and more. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Brought to you by Understood and the Ad Council. Dave, what are you doing? Just sending a gift to Dave2037. Who? Me in the future. I save a little money from every paycheck as a gift to Dave2037, so he can spend it on things like anti-gravity boots or a hologram Doberman, something cool like that. I think Dave2037 deserves it. 
He worked hard. What are you getting Steve 2037? I guess I was thinking Steve 2037 would just fend for himself. Well, all right, but don't expect to be borrowing my anti-gravity boots. You want to have money in your future? You got to start saving now. Putting some money from every paycheck into a savings account or contributing to your 401k can make a big difference later. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free ideas and easy ways to save, go to feedthepig.org. That's feedthepig.org. Hey, let's just hope Steve2037 doesn't get his hands on a cold time machine because he is going to come back here and knock some sense into you. This message brought to you by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the Ad Council. Hi, The Alchemist Show is back with another discussion topic. This time it is on exotic animals you can own. On the mic this time is Michaela, Caitlin, and Lily. So, Caitlin, why don't you start? Okay, um, I have uh, my first five animals are the fennec fox, a red fox, a serval, a piranha, and a sugar glider. <laughs> why would you need a piranha? Because they're cool, okay? You could just like True. throw like a piece of meat in like their tank and they're like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, they literally eat anything. All right, so um, the fennec fox is a, like, a tannish colored fox. It's really, like, small. It's one of the most social foxes that you can get. And it's probably, like, the cutest one out of all, to be honest. I and then, give it that. Um, they're not allowed in every state. Like, most of the animals probably aren't allowed in some states. Some of them allow them, some of them don't. Um, if you probably, if some states wouldn't let you have them, I'm pretty sure you could, like, get a special exotic animal license for them or something like that. Yeah. Um, the red fox, uh, those are, I don't know where the fennec fox is originally from. I think they said, like, I know it's from, like, the, de the desert, but I know the red fox are, is from North America because we have them here in, like, Missouri, and there's, like, a lot in Illinois and, like, all around us. Um... I know a lot of people who have red foxes because, like, I was obsessed with foxes for a really long time. I know a lot of people who do have foxes and, like, exotic pets were, like, got, like, they were found in the wild that were hurt or, like, they couldn't, like, take care of themselves for very long. So, like, they just took them in and then, like, took care of them. And then they can't go back in the wild because they're too used to humans. And the humans that see, like, a fox, like, if you've seen a fox come up to you, and you're, like, scared of foxes, you're going to, like, try to kill it. Because, like, you're just like, ah, it's a fox. It's going to eat me. <laughs> True. But they're really cute. And then the serval is a cat, kind of. It's like a, I think it's a, like a, it's like a wild cat, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it, this is the one that's, like, half cat, half domestic cat. Like, half wild, half, I don't know which one. I don't know if it's this one. And another kind of related to the bangle. And then. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? A bangle is, like. A a, like it's a cat that's bred from a wild I'm pretty oh, sure okay. it's like a serval is what you breed a domestic cat with to get a bangle I'm not 100% oh, sure I didn't really okay. look that up but anyways um yeah a bangle is just a half wild and half domesticated and then the, I have a piranha uh piranhas everyone knows because they're really famous fish that literally eat anything mostly meat if you like mm -hmm. they're from South America and yeah, they're like really cool fish with sharp teeth. And then there's the sugar glider. Uh, my friend researched these my a uh, couple years ago, and apparently they have super bad separation anxiety, and you have to keep them with you 24/7, or they'll die because oh like <laughs> they look, I guess, like really bad anxiety and yeah. like separation, just, just really bad. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you have to keep them with you like all the time. My sister in college. Her friend had one, or has one, I think they still have it, and he, like, brought it to class with him, like, everywhere, because he's like, I can't leave it at home, it's just, <laughs> it's got to go, it's got to stay with me. Wow. Yeah, those are, those are my five, Michaela, what's yours? Uh, I did a wallaby, a chimpanzee, hedgehog, a chinchilla, and walrus, which is a type of kangaroo, and I didn't know this, but I guess hedgehogs are considered exotic animals, but I didn't really think so, but... They're really cute and small, which I don't know how people take care of them because they're spiky. Like, how do you... I don't know. It confuses me. But I really want one because they're small and cute. And yeah, I really want a chimpanzee, too, because if you train them right, they can be really smart. Okay. So it could be, like... They can, like, rip your face off, though. Okay, I know, but if you, like, raise them up in a good, healthy home... Michael Jackson had one. See? 
Like, Michael Jackson was would... also a drug addict, so okay, it's not a really well. good point, Michaela. <laughs> they're so really cute, and they're, I mean, if you raise them right, they're sweet. And I know wallabies are really cute. Also, I want chinchilla. I just, I just want all of these animals. Okay. They don't take baths. They, like, roll around in, like, volcano dust, and that's how they clean Aww, themselves, and it's really cute. That's so cute. Yeah. Okay, Lily, what do you have? I did a capybara, which are becoming increasingly popular as pets. Um, the bearded dragon, which actually is a common house pet in the I have United one. States. Her name's Yoshi. Yoshi? Wow. Yeah. That's not a turtle. Uh, high incident maca, which is a type of bird. A ball python, which is similar to a boa constrictor. And a sloth, which is also becoming more popular as pets and are often thought of as good pets due to their docile natures. But they are pretty difficult to care for, and they need things to swing from as well as humid and warm environments. So I would not recommend getting, like, all of these pets because <laughs> be forewarned. And, like, we're not, like, saying you should go out and buy these pets because obviously these are wild animals, right. and a lot of these animals... Are, or a couple of these animals are on the endangered species list, oh, and yeah. it's not okay to get and them. And you have to get, like, certain license and stuff, so if you want to go through that trouble, then... And you also, like, I don't know, it's just, it wouldn't be a good idea, because most of these are wild animals, like, they were, like, born in the wild, and then you're yeah. taking them away from their, like, homes, and, like, that's not okay. But a lot of the, a lot of people own these animals right now, so... so. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's still another one, owls. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Owls are cute. All right. Uh, I think that's all we have for today's topic. The Alchemy Show will be right back after this important message. I've been to a 2010 from a shelter. This cat makes me make art. He's always motivating me to draw pictures of him. He just is motivating artistically. He's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Keyboard Cat, YouTube star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Start yours today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. When I was six, I had one thing on my mind. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball every chance I could. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. So I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. I'm Paul George. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke F-A-S-T. Fast. Life is why. Visit strokeassociation.org. Brought to you by the American Stroke Association and the Ad Council. Hi, the Alchemist Alchemist Show is back with another discussion topic. This time it's on being breastfed. On mic is Hannah. Lucas. And Nathan. So in the past, we were told that breastfed kids were smarter, but recent research finds that to not be entirely true. Breastfeeding does have many known health benefits, but pediatrics found that children who are breastfed for at least six months have less hyperactive behavior by age three compared to kids who weren't breastfed. Researchers studied 8,000 children in Ireland at ages three and five. The kids took standardized tests to measure cognitive abilities, and overall, the breastfed kids only scored a tad higher than the rest. The difference wasn't big enough to show statistical significance. The reason breastfed kids tend to be smarter is because of their mothers. Typically, mothers who breastfeed have higher education levels and tend to engage in less risky behaviors while they're pregnant, such as smoking and drinking. Mothers who breastfeed their children also spend more time reading to their children. And even though the difference isn't very large, it is still there and it's worth doing for your children, especially if you want them to be healthier and less hyperactive when they are a toddler. Yeah, well, that's a thing that usually comes with that sort of thing is that people nowadays, they always look at statistics. They want to know how smart you are. It's like no one ever cares about your true well-being. And that's what breastfeeding really does. It's people, it's a, being a tad bit smarter is a side effect of it all, 
Well, in the end, it just it allows you to be more healthy and everything because of the increased proteins because the milk from our mothers are meant for humans. Such because everyone's like, oh yes, drink cow's milk or other animals' milks, but that's meant for those animals. Right, and children that get their own mother's milk have less allergies than those who get fed, fed like the powder stuff or like cow's milk. So they're less likely to get uh, like uh, allergic to peanuts or something right. like that? Right, they have less allergies, like uh, just whatever allergies that people have, they probably weren't breastfed. And also like whenever you said that people get less hyperactive, you mean like ADHD? Right. Cool. Well, and another thing is that that study was in Ireland and well. <laughs> they probably should do that in America or America and other countries, not just Ireland. Yeah, to compare the differences, right. even though it might not nece be really necessary, but it's always better to have different opinions, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I still think it's worth doing for like health benefits and maybe that tad tiny score higher in education. Plus it lets, you know, the mother and the child to bond more right. as well. So it helps with development issues as well. Mm -hmm. It also helps a mother, I believe, too. Uh, they are less likely to get breast cancer if they breastfeed their children. Yeah, less likely the Even though it's getting stretched? <laughs> that's that's the research that they've done. You're, le you're less likely to have breast cancer. It's pretty cool. You have to understand, he thinks that if you lose one cell, then your chances are increased. <laughs> well, that, that's, no. That, no. no. I mean, men can get breast cancer too. It's just yeah. the muscles in the chest. Yeah. Get tumors and stuff. Uh, do you have anything else to say on this? I don't think I do. I think mm. I'm good. All right. I think that's all we have for this topic today. This is Alchemist Show. We'll be right back after this important message. People been saying to your friend, get a different face. And posting on their feed, they're super ugly. The things they say to them online are cruel and they're not true. So tell your friend, I'll stand up for you. Don't worry, I know what to do. Know someone being bullied online? You can be a witness and make a difference by letting the world know it isn't cool. And by letting your friend know you care. Learn more at eyewitnessbullying.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. My daughter, Brooklyn, was also a motivation for me to go back to school. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. At age 26, Kareem finished his high school diploma. I could not have done it alone. I feel like if I didn't have anyone to push me, I wouldn't even bother to do it. I got one milestone down the drain, and now I got to work on the next. I see the future is really bright for me. I feel like it doesn't matter the age, as long as you go back and get it done. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. No one gets a diploma alone. You have more support than you realize. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Hi, the Akmer Show is back with another discussion topic. This time it is on Benny and the Ink Machine, Chapter 2. On mic this time is Riley Bradley. Along with Seth Martin. Mm -hmm. All right. On April 2017, an evil cartoon character will live again and have his revenge. Bendy is back in Chapter 2, which takes place in the recording studio floor. Sounds are echoing and the ink will be once again be dripping. This next chapter will definitely not disappoint fans of Bendy and the Ink Machine. The trailer for Chapter 2 had an eerie whistling in the back, as well as footage of the new area falling apart and splattering and filling up with ink. So what do you think um, about Chapter 2 Benny and the Ink Machine? Answer, you know? Well, um, I definitely will say that I like the, uh, the setting of it, um, a recording studio, but I will say, isn't he based off of some other character? Yeah, um, Bendy is... Uh, from like, I don't know if it's 1920s, 1930s, or what time period it is. It was like 1930s, I believe. Yeah, yeah 1930s. He's based off the black and white cartoons. Preferably, he just said he's based around Mickey. And the Mickey. whole story is, what, what, what if Mickey was a demon? Hmm. Instead of a mouse. I was about to say, because wasn't he... I thought he was like based off of a cat, like from... 
An old people. cartoon. Oh, wasn't it called Felix? Yeah. Yeah, Felix yeah. the Cat. There we go. Yeah. Um, I will say that horror games have always been like one of my favorites besides action games. Mm-hmm. Um, horror games like basically get the the scare out of you because then you're like trying to investigate what's going yeah. on and. And there's always a good story behind a scary game. And even some they're like poor, like they have like weird mechanics, like uh, the big popular one, the Five Nights at Freddy series. Um, they only had like similar gameplay, but they all had a story behind it. That's something. But in this game, the one thing about it is it's a free realm horror game, and it involves in a cartoonish looking world. Apparently, in Silly Vision, as it's called, it's the view you're looking at. It's called Silly Vision. You know, I I kind of wonder. It's it's kind of like. Outlast because of yeah. you free roam, but I mean, of course, you got to go to certain areas. Yes, but as you said, f- free roam on this one, it's just crazy. I mean, I've seen some footage of Vindy, and to me, it looks pretty good. I mean, not much of the jump scares got me, but otherwise, said so, it's a really good scary game. Yes, it is. Um, the fact that what we saw in the trailer, we saw like it's the place uh, floor down below. They're recording, I guess, music for the cartoons. And the thing about it made it interesting that really brought out that you knew it was recording studio was the fact that you hear, I guess it was Bendy whistling. Now, here is where it gets a little interesting. Um, so, in the first one, it was more of just jump scares, correct? It was more just jump scares. Now, in the second one... Yeah. Are they going to add in maybe him chasing you or That would make it more interesting. Like each floor, if they do more chapters, each chapter's a new floor. It'd be cool if each chapter was a different version of horror. Like one's just jump scares. Oh, uh, next one, you're being followed. Next one, you're actually running. Four, you have to hide. And, number, and the fifth one, you fight him. Well. And you fail. The, 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 no, I don't know how you would beat him. I mean, you don't really have weapons, though. Yeah, you have an axe. Oh, you, you do? You, you didn't play the rest of the first chapter? No, I didn't, unfortunately. Oh, I was like only halfway through. You didn't do your research. Through. I only did halfway through, man. When you get axe later on, I guarantee you that's what's going to come back. Mm. It's usually, uh, it'd be weird to stay off with an axe and you just drop it behind me. You know, there's something chasing you. The fact that the thing about it bending, and the thing about this is why I think there's going to be some jump scares in this before he chases you. In fact, um, in the trailer, you see a puddle of ink, like a full on like, river, a little river of ink. And then. In the uh, jump scare, uh, spoiler, minor spoiler, in the jump scare where he's at the ink machine, you see him dive down into ink, so he's kind of like one of those Splatoon characters who go inside the ink and you know, apparently like three... Like, they all they all through. get to cheat. The game mechanics get to cheat. We don't... This no. is so unfair. <laughs> I mean, you are playing a human. You know the what? Story Humans pretty can neat. cheat too. The story is <laughs> elaborate. There's so many questions to be answered. And, I mean... And I just hope that the Meatly Games uh, works on telling us more of the story. Now, the good question is, how how far are they going to go with the Bendy game? Like, wh- how many chapters are they going to go into? I think five would be an appropriate chapter. Five? I think so, too. It would be nice to also have, like, a, a, sec- like a sequel for it. Yeah. Um, and Boris have Bendy and the Ink Machine. And the Ink Machine 2. Um, where, 2D. That'd be funny. Like, where he's not dead. Uh, you know, if they decide to make it to where you can beat him. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know where they're going to go with this. I mean, we are only in the second chapter after all. I don't know. I mean, it depends on how dark it gets. If you see the ending for FNAF, you literally wear your skin. So I don't I know how dark it gets. Get. You know, I kind of wonder what's the new FNAF. There is no new FNAF. Ah, uh, after Sister's Location? The movie. Oh, it's just a movie and that's it? I think it's the movie. Movies. Movies. Anyway, I guess, uh, I guess that's all we really have to talk about this topic. Yeah, do you have do you have anything left that you want to say? Bendy will return in chapter two. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I think that's all we have on this topic for today. Uh, the Alchemist Show will be right back after this important message. How to be a great dad in fifteen seconds? Bike ride, go fish, walk in the park, phone call, milkshake, play catch, picnic, fly a kite, tell jokes, laugh, talk, read a story, tell a story, bumper car, swing set, bowling, pillow fight, cut loose, stay tight. Whew. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. It only takes a minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. And you can do it at doihaveprediabetes.org. 
but you're probably not going to. Nope, I'm sure you've got a perfectly good excuse. Kids, work, <laughs> I get it, you're busy. So what better time than now? Let's begin. Raise one finger if you're a man. Ladies, none yet. Oh, count in your head if you're driving. Now, three more fingers for everyone over 60, two over 50, one over 40, one more if you're not physically active, another finger if anyone in your family has type two diabetes, another if you've got high blood pressure. If you're overweight, raise another finger, two if you're very overweight, and three if you're really overweight. You've just taken the world's first audio pre-diabetes test. And if you're holding up five or more fingers, visit doihaveprediabetes.org or talk to your doctor. There's no excuse because prediabetes can be reversed. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its pre-diabetes awareness partners. Hi, the Alchemist Show is back with another discussion topic. This time on the mic is Anessa Robinson. And Anthony Kirby. This time we're going to be discussing about the health benefits with camping. Now, some of you are probably thinking that there's no way um, health, that there's health benefits that come along with camping, but there is. What, what are some of the things that you know about camping that helps with uh, health benefits? Well, you can go on hikes and around the hills and stuff. And there's, if there's a lake around, you can go fishing or swimming. True, true. And, um... I believe it um, helps with like stress and stuff and getting away from like this just free world and stuff. Indeed. And um, yeah, and I think uh, I believe uh, Tex the University of Texas in Michigan did a few um, uh, experiments or something that uh, did like help prove the thing about camping with health benefits. Mm. Yeah. And it'll give you a chance to disconnect from all your technology and stuff and reconnect with your family and friends. Yeah. And the great outdoors. And it also puts you in a better mood and stuff. Because I bet you never heard, well I bet you heard people coming back from camping trips with like good stories and stuff mm. about what happened. Yes. Like, and they usually they usually tend to be in like a more happy mood after they come back and stuff. Mm. So yep. and um it can also help um get rid of like the some types of depression and stuff, I think. So mm. yep. anything you like to add about this? Yep. All the option that can go in through your body with your blood pressure, your body can function with less strain when there is plenty of off oxygen. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. And it helps get whole well, to get rid of like the whole well, it helps like with some serious health benefits from the extra oxygen and the low amounts of pollution and stuff in the air. Mm -hmm. Um, anything else you want to add to this? Well, when you go camping and set a fire, make sure you have some good scary stories to tell in the dark. Yeah, true. That's a, they're always fun. Yeah. Um, oh. anything else? It can also put you in a, for, enjoy better over mood during and after your trip. Yeah. I know. Um, anything else you want to put on it and stuff? Um, well, uh, I think that if you don't have anything else to put on this topic, um, I think that so we'll, we'll have time for this. Um, the Alchemist Show will be right back after these important messages. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was 0.5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. 
My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter has just been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. You know what really gets a party started? Indoor baseball. Yeah, just find a broom or a pool cue, and you can use, like, anything as a ball. Cans, bottles, shoes. Hey, bro, toss me that avocado. Most party fouls are pretty dumb, but if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Learn more at ultimatepartyfoul.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Hi, the Alchemist Show is back with another discussion topic. This time is on anywhere you want to go in the world and why. This On the mic this time is Michaela, Lily, and Caitlin. Okay, so I, my top five like places I would want to go is Scotland, Ireland, Canada, Amsterdam, and Sweden. But I think I'd mostly want to go to Sweden, but anyway. Okay, so in Scotland, they have like, they have national health care for everybody and they have good public transportation. They have really cool historical buildings that nobody's knocked down. And there's a lot more places to go. They have like museums, good music, good scenery. Um, travel costs are kind of cheap and they have good like, like they have castles there, like actual castles just standing there. That's amazing. Um, I mean, it's kind of rainy there, but I mean, if you like rain, which I do, which would be a good place to go. I mean, of course, there's a lot of negatives too, but that's one. And in Ireland, they have like they have good places for traveling to. Also, if you work, like you are entitled for like a 20 day leave, and like that's pretty good. And healthcare is available for everybody. And guns are illegal there, so like gun things are like not as high. Like gun crime is like pretty low, <laughs> so it's kind of like safe. And there's like good views and stuff, good public transportation. Then I would want to go to Amsterdam because it's like really low cost on living there. And it's easy to go around everywhere, like you can walk everywhere and public transportation is always really good. Um, and there's lots of job opportunities because a lot of people go there to start um, new like businesses. Um, there's like really good high quality schools for kids and they're really cheap and if you and yeah <laughs> in Sweden I'd live there too because it's pretty cheap there it's really pretty good public transportation sometimes you can get free health care but that just depends and if you're a parent you get like 480 days of paid parental leave which I think is amazing which I don't know why we don't have that here. And it's for, or like, both the father and the mother. Because so. America. Yeah, it's amazing. So, your turn. My place would be Canada, and that's because they have chivalry and know how to be polite. They've had gay marriage legal since 2005. Their money is better. They have economic freedom, less income disparity, cheaper university tuition, more social mobility, and lower youth and overall unemployment rates in the U.S. The drinking age is 18. <laughs> <laughs> drinking age. Ooh, drinking. Ooh. Canadian chocolate bars and bacon are tastier. They have Montreal, which has a bunch of amazing stops. Canada is much safer and has lower crime rate and lower suicide rate than the U.S., there's universal health care. They have poutine, enough said. They have universal, universally uh, sweetened iced tea, <laughs> which just so happens to be my favorite drink. They use a metric system, so life is way easier because most day-to-day -day math equations can be solved by understanding the power of 10. And I'm terrible at math, so that one works for me. <laughs> and summer days are longer, and summer is definitely my favorite season, so Canada's just better, what can I say? I went specific and said certain towns because I just like researched like pretty villages around the world and like better high quality of living and I um, 
have loved a lot of these towns already. And some of them I just found out and I was like, whoa, these are gorgeous. But Belfast, Ireland uh, has beautiful scenery, wonderful culture, and my heritage is like a lot Irish. I have a lot of Irish and German in me. So like, I don't know, I guess I'm like going back because I still, like my family still has like Irish names and it's so cool and yeah. Um, I have Singapore, Singapore. I guess a town in Singapore. I don't know why they double named it. It's like New York, New York. <laughs> uh, one of the richest nations in the world. Super low crime rates, high education, and high quality of living. Brussels, Belgium, is filled with museums, national parks, and high end restaurants. Um, I have Sweden. <laughs> Uh, Stockholm, Sweden has a balance of work, life, safety, and environment issues. Um, I don't know if I'm going to say this one right. Ottawa, Canada. Most, is, it's said to be the most educated in Canada, low unemployment, um, considered UN ESCO uh, World Heritage Site. Amsterdam, Netherlands, uh, standard of living. City combines modern and urban living with relaxed attitudes toward recreation and leisure. And then oil, I don't know, that's not spelled right. Anyways, it's uh, Satrioni, Greece. Beautiful village, deep with culture. I don't even know, I have Greenland. I don't know how to say the village name. Um, it's a village with views of mountains, lakes, and in the wilderness. I have Wingen, Switzerland. It's a beautiful scenery, safe country, very rural. rural. And to and my family's also from there. Well, I was my family too. Just That's I awesome. usually end up going back to like heritage things. I don't know why. Um, Izzy's French Riviera on the coast, tropical, beautiful scenery, and Shirakawa, Japan, be beautiful village, natural, peaceful, many things to do, and by the mountains. All my things, like all my like places that I want to live, are by mountains or like me too, like rugged places. I just love mountains and like forest and like beaches and stuff. And there's some that have like all of that in it. <laughs> Same. I uh, do you guys have anything else to say? Uh, not really. But well. No, not really. I wish I could really go there. That's what I wish. Yeah, I want to go to all gorgeous. of these places. Same. All right. Uh, I think that's all we have for today's uh, topic, and that's all we have today's for today's show. Just uh, join us next time on the Alchemist Show. Thanks for listening. <laughs>